G'day everybody, welcome back to What's New in EDU, where we're coming to you from day two of BET UK 2019. I've got another riddle for you today. What's weightless but takes two people to hold? Share your guess in the comments and at the end of the episode, I'm gonna share the answer. We had a blast yesterday meeting educators from around the globe and getting to talk about all the new Microsoft education tools designed to help transform classroom time and personalize learning for all. But today, it's all about creating and supporting inclusive, happy classrooms. What do you have for us, Barbara? Thank you, Mark, and hi, everybody. My name is Barbara, and I'm so excited to be here today. I just had the chance to talk for the first time about the latest research we have done together with the Economist Intelligence Unit about emotion and cognition in the age of AI. So some of the things that we shared was to see what some leading schools are doing around the world to really help educators, help the students build the social emotional skills that are critical for well-being. And we found some really, really fascinating things about what some of the schools are doing and how we can take that to a systemic level and what kind of technologies can really play a critical role in helping students develop the social emotional skills that are critical for their overall well-being. So don't miss this research. Please take a look at it. We're here to follow up. And now, back over to Sarah. Thanks, Barbara. I'm standing here in the Minecraft classroom at BET 2019, and we've been teaching educators from around the world how to code with Minecraft Education Edition. We also just released two new standards-aligned coding curriculums for students ages 8 to 11 and 11 to 16. This is 20 to 30 hours of CSTA-aligned content you can start using today, downloadable on our website. And so teachers can use CodeBuilder, our new in-game coding app, to start teaching computer science no matter what level you are in the process. So go to our website, check it out, and uh, we're excited to be here. So here's Mike. Thanks, Sarah. So we're here at BET, and we're at the Windows Mixed Reality booth. And I'm going to be talking about VR and inclusion. Now, those are two topics that you might normally not associate. But what we've done is we've taken our immersive reader, which was designed for literacy and really focusing on the content, and we put it into virtual reality. And so what that means is maybe students with autism who want a little extra focused reading time, maybe it's dyslexic students, or maybe it's students who just have some visual impairments and want to see things in a really big and immersive way. When it's in the immersive reader, the student can really focus on the content. You have the audio right there in your ears, so it's a really immersive experience. So now we're going to go talk about VR curriculum. Over to you, Dan. Thanks, Mike. We've been really excited about the potential of mixed reality in the classroom, and we've seen some amazing success stories over the past year. We've also spent a lot of time talking to educators about what they needed to really effectively integrate the technology into their classroom. One of the things we've heard was, make it easier for us to use your content and help us teach what we need to teach. So as a result of that, we're excited to announce over 25 hours of free standards-aligned curriculum when you get a mixed reality headset from Microsoft. We've got some examples going on here behind us at the show with biology, but we've also got chemistry, astronomy, things like that, to make it even easier to bring the benefits of Windows Mixed Reality to your classroom. Over to you, Annie. Thanks, Dan. I'm Anthony, not Annie. Annie had a run, but I wanted to share my excitement on the continued work to make technology more inclusive and help every learner achieve more. The work we're doing with CodeJumper to help low vision and blind students get access to the coding tools to build their dreams is amazing, and we're partnering with the American Printing House for the Blind to bring that to students from around the world. Next up, let's hear from Jacqueline. Hi everyone, thanks Anthony. My name is Jacqueline Russell. I'm the program manager for Microsoft Make Code. And we're here at VET at the Lego stand where they're showcasing Make Code for Lego Mindstorms. We've got a couple really cool announcements from the Make Code team this week. First of all is of course our Teams integration. So we're announcing a beta this week where teachers will actually be able to attach Make Code program files right within assignments in Teams. And students can complete those assignments right within Teams using the Make Code editor. So you don't have to go outside of Teams to do any of your programming homework. The second announcement we have is a great new partnership we have with Cartoon Network and Adafruit. We published a series of projects 
using all of the great Cartoon Network shows and characters using the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express. So students can create fun things like a BMO music box or uh, an Enchiridion magic book uh, using MateCode and Circuit Playground Express. And the third and final announcement we have this week is a new programming environment called MakeCode Arcade, which is a 2D retro gaming development environment where students can create really fun games like Think of Pac-Man or Space Invaders just using a few blocks of code. And we are working with uh, hardware partners too. So you'll be able to create your games using MakeCode and download them onto these little DIY game type boards. Thanks so much for your time and over to you Karen. Hey, thanks Jacqueline. This is Karen from the Education Workshop. We're here on the floor at BET and we are super excited today to be celebrating Data Streamer, the new add-in from Excel that allows you to stream data in and out of Excel. We have three different projects here on the show floor today. They range from brains to oceans, our blue planet, to balls. Let's start off first with the Brain Gong and our experience that looks at how brains can be modeled and understand what happens during a concussion. I'm here with my good friend Life, and what we're doing here is looking at a sensorized brain. This brain has got some sensors on it, and we are able to actually read in real time the data that's coming out of it, and we can understand what happens on impact on the lobes when it gets gonged. Are you ready, Life? I'm ready. All right, here we go. Here's our gong. You can see here that it actually impacted the different lobes based on the impact, and we're able to save that away. Now, we are all very excited that we are challenging students to then mitigate that by designing a helmet. Today, this is my helmet. We'll redo that. Are you ready, Life? I'm ready. And you can see, sure enough, it has dampened down the impact. Now, one of the things that we think is super important is to increase uh, awareness about concussions. So we've partnered with the Think Taylor folks and are encouraging students to take the Think Taylor pledge to be educated about concussions, to be honest if they have one, and sympathetic to those around them who might have a concussion. So this is one example of how we're using Data Streamer. Now let's go over and see how they're doing it in the oceans, my Blue Planet section. Ready, James? I'm going to toss the ball to you. Thanks, Karen. Hello, everyone. I'm Mr. Burke. I'm one of the master teachers here in the Hacking STEM team. This year at BET, we have the BBC Oceans booth, and we have three data streamer-enabled activities for students to participate in. The first one is how deep is the ocean, where students use an ultrasonic sensor to map the ocean floor. The second is how ocean currents are formed. So students will build a salinity sensor so they can determine the salinity of the water and see how that affects ocean currents. And our third activity is how do sharks swim, where students will uh, build some devices to discover that activity. My colleague Jason will help you with that. Jason, here you go. Hey, thanks James. So over here we have some of the lesson materials that allow students to investigate how objects move in three-dimensional space. So to start off with, students take on the role of engineers that are, uh, that are developing a shark drone that will be able to move through a virtual marine environment in Excel and collect some data. So first off, we have students build a physical model that helps them understand three-axis rotation and how, how this uh, robot might move through the ocean. So on the z-axis, we have yaw. On the x-axis, we have roll. And then on the y-axis, we have this up and down motion called pitch. So after students have uh, used this physical model to understand some of the math behind three-dimensional movement, they then go into an investigation where they are designing a joystick that will help um, them use as the primary control system for their, for their robot. So they start off with uh, just using everyday materials like cardboard, copper tape. Here we have a wooden spool that's used for thread. And then they wire it up attach it to a microcontroller, either an Arduino Uno or a microbit, and once they've done that, they can then use Data Streamer to visualize live data in Excel. So, let's see if our joystick is testing properly. Let's try yaw. Okay, looks pretty good. Let's try pitch. Yep, we see that up and down motion. We got this fun joystick here as well. And then let's try roll. Okay, it looks like all systems are go, and now students are ready to enter the virtual marine environment 
and go collect some data. So once they start exploring, they can then maneuver their shark through this virtual ocean and collect data on the different species that are inherent in their virtual environment. So that's another great way that we can use Data Streamer uh, to help students get excited about data and engage in this, uh, this, this great uh, sequence where they look at physical models, they do some engineering design work, and then they do some data science. So next up, we have Brian from Play Impossible that's going to talk about how he can use their sensorized ball to visualize data in Excel using Data Streamer. Hey, wait, don't throw it yet, Jason. We've been calculating along the way each, one, how each time the ball has been caught, the catch force, and doing a Newton's second law experiment of the traditional egg toss. So Brian. That's right, we only have five Newtons left, so we don't want to go over it, and we can make a lot less of a mess playing with the ball than with the actual egg. Go, let's go, let's see it. Okay, ready, Brian? I'm ready. We did it, we stayed under. All right. All right. So this is Data Streamer. In this case, it's been connected with the Play Impossible ball. We're super excited to have this partnership and to be able to do real-time streaming data across the board. We've now seen it in the brain, we've seen it in the oceans unit, and now we see it with our good friends here at Play Impossible. That's right, any play, any sport, running, jumping, throwing, tossing, we can measure it. And we can take that activity and we can turn it into science lessons that can be used just like this digital egg toss here. Fantastic. Hey, so that's us here at the Education Workshop at BET. Back to you, Mark. That was awesome, Karen. Thanks so much. Before we go, we have one last announcement from our friends at Made by Dyslexia. Check it out. I'm Kate Griggs. I'm the founder and CEO of Made by Dyslexia. Made by Dyslexia is a global charity and we're led by successful dyslexics. We've partnered with Microsoft to create some incredible educational materials, some awareness training on the Microsoft Educator platform that's available right now. We want every single teacher and every single parent to watch the training and to really understand the value of dyslexia. Thanks for tuning in to another chock full episode of What's New in EDU, live from BET. We hope these updates will inspire and empower you to build on your inclusive and accessible learning environments. But don't worry, I haven't forgotten about our riddle. What is weightless but takes two people to hold? Friendship. So join us back here again tomorrow for day three. Same time, same place, on Facebook Live at 5 p.m. London time. See ya. See you next time.